Well, good afternoon. I'm Mark Clemens, along with Independent Tribune Sports Editor C. Jamal Horton. Uh, C. Jamal, uh, folks get to see you on camera now. Uh, they've heard you on the radio, they've seen you in print, and uh, a chance to do video. Poor folks, uh, you stuck with me, but it's going to be a fun ride. I'm uh, happy to be working here with my buddy, Mark Clemens. He doesn't know, but I really call him behind the door, behind closed doors, the czar of Cabrera Sports. And I'm happy to be here with my buddy. Well, I, I, do, I do appreciate that. What we're here today is to tell you about some exciting new things that are going on within the sports department at the Independent Tribune. And we're going to tell you about who we believe are the top teams in Cabarrus County uh, at this point. Yeah, you know, it's a really fun time, Mark. Uh, you know, I've been here a little over a month now and uh, gotten familiar with uh, both our boys and girls basketball programs in the county. And there's some talented players all over the place. And so it's going to be fun to kind of be able to kind of bring those to life for uh, people here in Cabarrus County, the readers of the Independent Tribune, uh, as we introduce uh, what we've uh, dubbed the uh, top of the IT boys and girls basketball rankings. And that's what we're here today is to tell you who those teams are. And uh, we're going to start with number six in the girls uh, to get underway. And we've had some debate on these. We, we went back and forth a little bit. And we expect these are going to change each week. But right now, after a big win over West Rowan, the Chargers from Cox Mill uh, in ladies basketball, number six. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. Uh, you know, just uh, on Tuesday night, um, the Chargers got a win, their fourth win of the season over West Rowan, as you mentioned. Uh, and head coach Moses Smith is in his first season with the Chargers, uh, leading them, kind of had to break down a few things to kind of get them going. Uh, but they really seem to have found a little bit of a rhythm going there now and, uh, you know, look for big things from Cox Mill later on this season. So good job starting off at number six on the top of the IT girls rankings. As we go to number five, we look to uh, Concord First Assembly, and uh, their uh, half came back in the Metrolina uh, Conference, and that's, uh, that's a pretty good league there as far as private schools, and uh, they've been blowing some people out. Yeah, they really have. Uh, you know, you mentioned some of the uh, competitors they have in that league, uh, such as Northside Christian, South Lake Christian, um, and they're led by a player named Zaria Wright who uh, is really an outstanding performer. Uh, look for the Eagles to kind of get going, catch their footing right now. I think they're in second place in the Metro Line of Conference there. Um, but certainly the season is still very young and they have a chance to move up, not only in their league, but as well in the top of the IT rankings. Yes, as we mentioned that some conferences are about the half point, uh, some conferences with lesser teams, they're probably just getting into their conference play, and, uh, and I think the first assembly team is about somewhere in between that. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, they had a, a tough game at Northside Christian earlier this year, uh, so I'm sure they're going to be looking for a little bit of retribution when that uh, matchup comes around, although this time now Northside Christian will be coming to Concord to face the Eagles. Central Cabarrus, number four. And Central Cabarrus is coming off a huge win. East Rowan, one of the powerhouse teams in the South Piedmont Conference, and uh, Coach Blaylock's got got him playing well in a big, big win. Brandon Blaylock, Blaylock, excuse me, is uh, is a very, very good coach. He's really found a way to motivate these young ladies. Um, as you know, they have a star player right now who's just a sophomore um, named Mahaley Hollett who was doing some big things. She had 38 points last week in a Christmas tournament. And then of course on Tuesday night, she put up uh, 28 points in a big win for the, um, for the Vikings. And we've got a story coming on her in the, the next couple of editions. Yeah, she's gonna be the centerpiece uh, story for our, our first week of our high school special preview section. Uh, so we certainly hope that you uh, grab that um, this week. But uh, Mah Mahaley Hollett um, and Kelsey Rowden, just a, a, a talented group of young ladies over so, there. Sophia McFarland uh, yes. uh, climbing the backboards hard for the, for the sure Lady Vikings out there as well. As we move up to number three, we go to the Mecca 4A Conference. Uh, A.L. Brown got off to a fast start this year, Coach Mike Wolford's team. And uh, they are at number three, and they're in the midst of a brutal schedule right now. Yeah, they really are. And I know that you got a chance to see them up close. Um, during the game uh, earlier this year. I think they played North Mecklenburg. Yes, a good, a good solid win against North Mech as well. Yeah. And, uh, Atana Grant uh, plays for uh, Coach Wolford's team and uh, as he said, fills up the stat sheet. <laughs> she really does. Uh, and as you'll get the opportunity to see uh, when you check out our uh, high school special section this week in our statistical leaders, you'll see uh, Miss Grant's name all over the place, whether it's points, 
rebounding or assists, she does, as you said, fill up the stat sheet, Mark. And we come to, to the top two in ladies basketball here in our first week of, of the top of the IT. Number two, Hickory Ridge. It's a close call, but Hickory Ridge out of the South Piedmont, uh, Talonda Simmons team, uh, playing very well right now. They really are. You know, they're uh, a guard arena team, have some very talented players. Uh, one of my favorite names, uh, Stacia Means Business, as I've added to her as their unofficial last name. Our Chris Berman of the IT here. <laughs> Absolutely, but she, she's really good. Uh, is it Laura McMiniman uh, playing well for her? Also back there in that backcourt. Uh, they've really done some damage this year. They're only, they're Early misstep was what against J.M. Robinson early in the yeah, season. Yeah, I believe so, and that was one of the reasons why our number one team is J.M. Robinson, uh, Lynn Smithson's team, uh, battling in the Mecca Conference, and uh, they're uh, they got their feet wet last year. This year, they're they're in with both feet and uh, paddling hard. Yeah, congratulations to the Bulldogs uh, making that uh, that debut as the very first. Uh, number one team in the uh, top of the IT girls basketball rankings. Uh, as you mentioned it, you know, just a lot of ability all over the place, whether it starts with Kelsey Mahoney, the 6'1 the center who was uh, signed with George Washington University, uh, Sydney Bickford, who signed with Pfeiffer University, Amaya Scott. I mean, you can just go down the list. They're very deep. And Lynn Smith does a great job of playing several players. They don't just rely on two or three players. They've got some good size in Mahoney and Ashley Bearden. And yeah. then, they, then they've got some speed with, with Vodders and uh, Scott getting up and down the floor. Yeah. And that's what you got to have in that Mecca conference to compete. Yeah, I mean, at that 4A level, um, and uh, I guess as you reported earlier this year, this is going to be their last season uh, at that 4A level. Uh, but they have a chance to do some damage. Uh, do you want to look at the look at the conference standings real quick while we, we've got a chance? Sure, absolutely. Let's go into the ladies' uh, conference, and we'll start first with South Piedmont. So that's the top of uh, my stack of papers here. You see how <laughs> us newspaper guys can't get away from the, the paper, although we're trying to get as digital as possible here, Jamal. Uh, South Piedmont, Hickory Ridge, 7-0. As, as we mentioned starting the uh, second half. Then right behind them, two teams that, uh, that are, are very good, South Rowan and East Rowan, uh, two teams that played in the conference title game last year and just a real, real slugfest in that ball game with East Rowan coming away with that win. But uh, South Rowan climbs into number two, thanks in part to Central Cabarrus win last night. Yeah, absolutely. It was a big, big win for the uh, for the Vikings. Uh, you know, making some noise in that league. It's, it's going to be fun. You know, again, we mentioned earlier, Brandon Blaylock getting those young ladies uh, on the move. And in the midst of the South Piedmont Conference, uh, Carson three and three, West Rowan three and four, three and four for Central Cabarrus, Cox Mill at three and four. So battling for those final playoff spots in the South Piedmont on the ladies' side, going to be a real tough challenge. Um, Concord one and seven, and Northwest Cabarrus uh, 0 and six on the young season, and that's the ladies' side of the South Piedmont. As we look at the Mecca 4A, we uh, uh, we've talked about J.M. Robinson four and up, tied with Hopewell, and they've got a big matchup coming up with the Titans. Uh, but then followed by that, Huff at two and two, Mallard Creek two and two, West Charlotte two and two, and A.L. Brown at two and two. Something's got to give there for, <laughs> for number three. And when uh, when Hopewell and Robbins start playing, it gets a lot tighter. If somebody can can take a sweep in that middle, they're a half game or one game back. Yeah, this is like the old uh, NFL commissioner Pete Rozell wanted when he wanted parity. Well, that's what they have here in the Mecca 4A. A great deal of parity. A lot of teams that are going to be battling for those playoff spots. And these are pretty good teams. When you look at, at a North Mecklenburg team at 0 and 4, advance at 0 and 4, those are two talented teams with a lot of skilled players but so far in their conference just haven't been able to break through in the win column in North Mac, uh, seven wins overall but uh, uh, then A.L. Brown uh, you know two and two uh, hey it's not over for anybody but no. the, the middle of that pack could really climb pretty soon oh absolutely you know anyone and, and I'm sure all these coaches in this league are smart so no one is going to look past anyone but anyone who kind of takes a glance at these uh, standings and go, oh, well, this is how things are going to play out for the rest of the season is sadly mistaken. You get, a, you get a run late in the season, too, going into the conference tournament, and uh, that top bid still hanging out there. Yeah. Uh, as we look at the Rocky River Conference, uh, they just got their season started as far as their conference season uh, this week. Parkwood 1-0, Monroe 1-0, then uh, West Stanley Central Academy, Mount Pleasant, and Forest Hills. Um, all falling in behind there, so uh, not we can't tell you too much about that because they've only played one game in that conference, <laughs> and uh, 
they'll be, get cranked up and then of course uh, Mount Pleasant will have to wait for exams next week. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But a lot of potential talent, well not potential talent, but a lot of talent there at Mount Pleasant. I look for them to make some noise as the season progresses, Mark. We move into the Charlotte Independent Schools Leagues on the ladies' side. Providence Day at 11 and 3, followed by Charlotte Christian 9 and 4, 9 and 6 for Covenant Day. Then, then Latin, Canon, and uh, Charlotte Country Day. And that, uh, that again, is uh, a wide open group. Yeah, it, it, I, you know, forgive me, um, but I, I still think that, you know, Providence Day is kind of the, the, yeah. the, the, the class of that league. Uh, right now, they're nationally regarded program. When I, I've lost count after like five or six consecutive state championships, always send guys, oh, well, not guys, but young yeah, players yeah. to some uh, to some uh, some very highly regarded colleges. So it's going to be a race to kind of see, you know, to me, no disrespect to the Cannon Cougars yeah. or anyone, but who can finish in that second spot. And and then in Providence State plays a tough out of conference schedule. They do. They play a great deal of uh, not just public school teams but also nationally, other nationally regarded public school teams, and that makes them ready to really cause damage in that postseason tournament. Now we look at the ladies' side in the Metrolina Athletic Conference, and Northside Christian at 4-0 and with uh, Concord First Assembly one game back at 4-1. and And uh, I think they've got to come to Concord later on to, to play First Assembly. They do, and it's always uh, an electric atmosphere. It's not just when the boys play, but it's also very, very exciting when the girls play as well. Uh, I was actually fortunate enough to be at that first meeting uh, there in Charlotte uh, when, um, when the Eagles went to Northside Christian. And so I can't wait to see what happens when they uh, come to this side. Rest of the uh, ladies' standings in the Metro Lina, we've got South Lake Christian 3-2. and two. Followed by Hickory Grove, Metrolina Christian, Gaston Christian, Gaston Day, and Westminster Catawba. So that's your lady standings in the Metrolina. Now we're going to move um, move on back to uh, the boys' side of things as we have our first uh, top of the IT, and we start at number six. Um, and this is a team that uh, a lot of teams probably don't, uh, the, particularly the top uh, teams, may not want to play because on a given night. Uh, They've got a couple of guys who can drop 35, 40 points on you. <laughs> Central Cabarrus coming in at number six, and uh, Levon Hightower, I think he's already dropped 30 some on a couple people this year. He's a special talent, he really is. I mean, he's, he's extremely fast end to end, a strong young man, and when he gets to that other end, he can rise up on you and flush it with authority. Oh, absolutely. And of course, uh, first, first full year head coach, uh, Kenyon Weeks, uh, the former Concord, former University of Falk, Florida player. Uh, leading in the first year, and he's trying to put his mark on that program, and he's got a, a very explosive Central Cabarrus team. He does, and he brings a great deal of talent to the Vikings because, you know, not only has he played at those high levels that you mentioned there, Mark, but he's also coached uh, at a number of different colleges as an assistant, so he brings a wealth of knowledge to this team. Uh, I know earlier in the season he was a little concerned about as to whether his uh, young men were going to buy into it, but they seem to be kind of putting it together now and making a run in that conference. First Assembly comes in at number five on the boys' side of things at the top of the IT. And uh, you don't talk about First Assembly without talking about Charles Mendley. Special, special, special talent. I mean, there's a reason that a number of colleges are looking at him, um, just athletic. Uh, and what I love about him is he doesn't just focus on the offensive end. He's a tenacious defensive player uh, who really makes an impact uh, on a, a talented group of players as well. Uh, very unselfish, so I think that they're going to go as far as he can take them, and I think he can take them pretty far. Yeah, he's going to be one of our statistical leaders that will uh, we'll unveil uh, in Friday's edition of the paper, so you want to be sure and look at that. I think uh, the last we looked, he might have been one uh, top of one of those categories. I think we can look for him in the top two. We won't give it away totally, okay. but okay. we can look for him up there. I haven't looked since you updated it, so, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's num number five, Concord First Assembly. Uh, we go to the Concord Spiders at number four, and this is kind of an unfamiliar uh, position for the Spiders over the last couple of years. They've won uh, games where they've had maybe one or two losses over the last three or four seasons, and uh, this one is um, uh, still a very talented team, but they're not quite there yet. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right, you know, and with, with the Spiders, and you know much more than I, Mark, that they always, well, I can't say always, but this year in particular, they kind of tried to get their football players back in form, get them in basketball shape, and so they finally seem to be getting there. Uh, and when they do, watch out. 
I mean, George Walker really has those guys, you know, a, a great deal of potential. There's always enthusiasm over at uh, Concord High, as you know. It's an interesting week for Concord. They played Northwest Cabarrus last night. Uh, Wednesday night, they were playing um, uh, A.L. Brown, and when we take this, they hadn't played that game yet. Right. But uh, when, uh, and then Friday night, they're playing Rocky River. So they go at a conference for two of their three games this week and then go into a, a kind of a, a, a practice lull as I think your, <laughs> is, is your story in, in Tuesday's edition uh, talked or Wednesday's edition talked about. Yeah with exam week uh, you know spoke with the coach and just saying now what he tries to do is use that week as just an intense practice time uh, the guys really get at it they don't let up uh, so that they're prepared for that second you know really that second half of the conference uh, season there. Big, big basketball team too. You get, you look at Malik Ford, and we'll probably be talking about him some more during the season. It's six eight on the back side of that Concord team, and he's and he's got two guards in front of him at uh, Keenan Black at six three and six four. Rayshon Black, the, the point guard. Yeah, freshman. Freshman Rayshon point Black. guard. So uh, uh, that's a that's an interesting team to watch. George Walker, the head coach, says. Uh, come conference tournament time, he believes his team will be much better. Absolutely. I and that's that's that. number four this week. <laughs> now the next three teams we're going to talk about, uh, just right now a slight cut above Concord and, and really, really good basketball teams. It's it's hard to pick between these three teams. Uh, and we're going to put at number three, Cox Mill. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and you know, as, you, as you said, you know, just before we proceed, you know, these top three really could be interchangeable because there are some outstanding programs with some amazing coaches and some uh, remarkable players. Uh, but uh, as you stated, Cox Mill at number three, uh, the Chargers uh, started off really, really strong, uh, went down to one of the toughest uh, high school tournaments, holiday tournaments in the country. Uh, down at the uh, Farm Bureau uh, Classic down in Dorman, South Carolina and faced some tough competition. Uh, but as you mentioned earlier, they got a, a big win over West Rowan last week to kind of stay in the hunt for that uh, conference ch uh, championship at South Piedmont. So you never know where this team is going to go with Coach Jody Barbie. Got a leader like Matt Morgan who's headed to Cornell and a uh, smart guy and a great basketball player. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, now the, here's here was the here was the quandary we had. Uh, we've got one of these teams that beat the number one team in the state last night, <laughs> and we've got one of these teams that beat that team that beat the number one team in the state. So we're going to tell you the top two. I'll let you. I'll let you do number two. Uh, at number two, you have the J.M. Robinson Bulldogs. Uh, you know, coached by uh, you know head coach uh, Lavar Bass Sr. Um, that's where they are, and you alluded to the fact that they beat number one ranked North Mecklenburg on Tuesday night. Just a, a momentous win for that Bulldog program. And that, that sent some ripples through the, the basketball ranks because that was the last undefeated 4A boys team in North Carolina. How about that? A public, public schools in, boy, in 4A. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for me, J.M. Robinson is just a team that I think, you know, we were talking earlier about teams kind of hitting their stride, and I feel like that that's where the Bulldogs are right now. Connor Booth, a young man who's improved his game, grown, put on 25 pounds of muscle during the offseason, uh, can shoot the three and go to the basket uh, very strongly. Uh, Jordan McKenzie, a guard. Uh, LeVar Batts Jr., who's one of the highest rated players uh, in the nation in his class, just a sophomore. I mean, my goodness. A really, really talented uh, basketball team at J.M. Robinson and uh, some exciting things coming up and they're battling in that Mecca conference. But again, you play North Mech and get a win, that's, that's a solid road win over in Huntersville. Yeah, and I'd be remiss if I did not mention Daniel Spencer. Um, I don't want to you know, use the term overachiever, but he's the guy who gets the very most out of his ability, 6'1 or 6'2 and can play inside with the big guys. Nice dunk uh, on Tuesday night against North Mech as well. And he's always getting some of those hustle stats, too. You, you, you see rebounds, steals, and uh, if you kept track of loose balls, he's one of those guys that go, he's one of those guys you need on your team. Absolutely. Now, we got a Hickory Ridge, and, and, and man, Coach Robert machado has got a team that's uh, playing really, really well. They had a tough loss in the Cox Mill tournament to a very good Butler team. They did. But, uh, you know, if they hit free throws in that game, that's a 
that's a one or two point ball game. Yeah, it is. And you know, Butler uh, actually beat Jim Robinson the night before um, they beat uh, Hickory Ridge in, the, in that game. But you're right. I mean, they're right there. And um, they also have that win uh, earlier this season against Jim Robinson. Well, as we look at the uh, uh, number one team, uh, in the deciding factor in my mind, a three point win for Hickory Ridge earlier over J.M. Robinson. The difference between one and two, very, very little difference. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, the fact that, you know, I, I know that J.M. Robinson fans will say, well, we're a three A size, but right now they're a four A team. They play in a four A conference, a tough four A conference. And for Hickory Ridge to get that win, you know, early in the season, albeit, that says a lot about them right now. So, again, there can be a lot of movement in this top of the IT uh, rankings. So nothing, you know, is final for the season. That's why they play the games. We're halfway through the season. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, uh, and of course, everybody getting cranked up. Let's look uh, real quick at the standings uh, on the boys' side of things. Uh, we'll go first with the South Piedmont with Hickory Ridge, uh, uh, our number one team, and also number one in South Piedmont, six and zero, oh. six and one for Cox Mill, Concord six and two. Then you get uh, it gets starting to tighten up a little bit in the Middle West, old man. Uh, four and three Carson, two and three, two and four for East Rowan. Central Cabarrus one and four. South Rowan one and five. And Northwest Cabarrus still looking for the first league win in the South Piedmont. Um, and it, it's a really good league at the top. And uh, those guys in the middle can, can jump up and bite you all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, and, you know, as we mentioned earlier, I've only been here with the IT a little over a month now, so I wasn't very familiar with the South Piedmont. But my goodness, I mean, it, it's it could be the best 3A conference in the state, quite honestly. And I think some nights the difference in, in these teams is one, a hot shooter, or two, who gets after it most defensively. Yeah. And the one thing I noticed about Hickory Ridge, when their defense was turned up high level, they were, they were as good as anybody you yeah, see. Absolutely. We go to the Mecca, and when you look at the Mecca conference, I'm going to start at the bottom and tell you that Hopewell is in fourth play, I mean, in five, they're 0 and 4 and at the bottom, and they've got one of the best players in, in the state of North Carolina. <laughs> Go figure. I that tells you a little bit about that league. Yeah, I mean, uh, and you got one of the best players headed to North Carolina next year in Luke May, and uh, I mean, they're. That's a good basketball team at 0 and 4. It is. It, it really is. Uh, not a team that I expect to stay in that cellar very long. The number one team right now is Huff at 3 and 0. And then you've got Robinson, North Mecklenburg, and West Charlotte all at three and one. And something's got to give there. I don't think that's going to stay the same at all. I really don't. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Bulldogs, you know, uh, the Cabarrus County representative uh, in that 4A league, make some noise. Now, I know a lot of people talked about West Charlotte before the season, too. West Charlotte's a pretty good basketball team. They are. Uh, very well coached. Um, has a long legacy of sending guys to some top flight colleges. Right now they have Kennedy Meeks at the University of North Carolina uh, and uh, several other young men who are going to have an opportunity to play there. The, the rest of the standings, Mallard Creek 2-2, two and two, Vance 1-3, and three, and A.L. Brown at 0-3. And, three, and um, the Wonders still looking to try to find, uh, you know, find a foothold there, but uh, got some talent on that team as well. Yeah, and I, and I do, please forgive me, Wonders fan, I, I, I did neglect to mention you guys as the Cabarrus County representative as well. No disrespect at all, and I expect some great things from you guys as the season goes on. Coach Shelwin's clutch team, uh, and as, as we're taping this, uh, getting ready to play Concord uh, uh, up at Bullock Gym to get back into conference play. Rocky River Conference, as we mentioned on the ladies' side, uh, they, they've just got one game in the books. Forest Hills, Monroe at the top of the league standings at 1-0. Everybody else is either 0-1 or have not played a conference game yet. Uh, Mount Pleasant at 0-1. So we'll see what the Tigers can uh, muster up as the Rocky River Conference uh, continues along. And those Charlotte Independent Schools leagues, um, Charlotte Christian and Providence State uh, 1-2 in the top of the standings there. And that's not a surprise. No, not at all. They're usually you know, among the tops in the, in the state uh, at that private school 3A level. Uh, and so this year, you know, Coach Brian Field over at Providence Day, um, they're going to be good as usual. Uh, Sean Brown, the head coach at Charlotte Christian, they always have something going on. So it'll probably be a tussle uh, between those two for that top spot. Cannon uh, stands in at five and seven, and uh, Cannon's got some young guys. They always seem to find a guy that steps up and moves up to the next level. I'm thinking uh, Jarrell Eddy, who played at Cannon, oh, yes. now, now playing in the NBA. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, so, I mean, we got, uh, 
I, I, I think when we mentioned the NBA, we were talking about Ish Smith uh, from Central Cabarrus being in the NBA, but do we, we forgot about Jarrell Eddy, who was uh, play, playing with the Celtics now, I believe. That's right, and of course, D-Boss, Concord's D-Boss has kind of been in and out. And he's just on the life. cusp. He's on the cusp. I know it's so he's so close to making an NBA roster that he can taste it, and it's a frustrating thing, but you just have to keep working harder. And, and I know Ish can tell, tell him that advice because he's been with I don't know how many teams, and he keeps working hard. And we run into his dad out at First Assembly occasionally, and he, mm -hmm. he always says Ish is working hard, working on that outside shot. Keeping a job. Yep, that's a, and that's a good job if you can play in the NBA for five or six years. Absolutely, I think it. Hey, let's look at the Metro Atlanta uh, Conference uh, to wrap up things. So first Assembly, 5-0. and oh, And we talked about uh, Midland and company, and they're, they're a very good basketball team. Northside Christian at 4-1, and one, and they've got a return visit uh, coming out to, uh, uh, to Concord to First Assembly to play. Gaston Day, then we're followed by Metro Atlanta Christian, Southlake. Gaston Christian, Westminster Catawba, and Hickory Grove. So, a lot of basketball left, and this is the first edition. Uh, Jamal, what else you want to tell folks while we got an opportunity here? Just uh, you know, follow us closely. You know, Mark and I plan to uh, to be here every week. Uh, you never know who we're going to have as a guest talking uh, with us about the top of the IT basketball rankings. Um, so it's going to be fun. We look forward to the rest of the season. Well, this has been uh, the unveiling of the top of the IT, and we might come up with the name of this program at some point. So. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I'm Mario Clements. Uh, James Nix helped on this one. Does uh, always doing a great job uh, in our multimedia department here at the Independent Tribune. That's right. And see Jamal Horton, our new sports editor, and welcome on board. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. You've been here for a while. Sorry, Mark. Right. Compare sports. Uh, yeah. Thank Just you. I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great day.